In this video, we'll discuss using variables in ArrayTK scenes. Variables are a way for downstream operators to provide extra information to their inputs about the context in which those inputs are being used. This video builds on concepts introduced earlier in the intro series, so I recommend at least watching the concepts and repetition filters sections before this one. We'll be using version 0.28 of the toolkit, but most of this should also apply for earlier versions. First, let's set up our renderer. Open the palette using the Alt-R shortcut and create a Raymarch Render 3D. I'm setting the resolution here so that it fits in this side panel, but you don't necessarily have to do that. Next, with the renderer selected, use the Alt-Shift-R shortcut to open the RayTK Editor Tools menu. Choose Add Look At Camera, and we're going to set the position on that to 2, 3, and 5, and then the FOV angle to 70 and then select the renderer again, open the menu again, and choose Add Point Light. And we're gonna set the position on that to 5, 8, negative 1. The first example we'll look at is the Modulo 2D operator, which repeats its input in a grid along two axes. Create a prism SDF operator and set the axis to Y. And then set both the radius and height to 0 0.3. Then create a modulo 2D and we're going to insert that between the prism SDF and the renderer. We covered this operator in more detail in the repetition filters section, but the general idea is that it slices space into a grid and then runs its input within whichever cell the renderer is asking about, causing the SDF to appear in all the cells. Right now, the input is always the same in all of the cells where it appears, but we can use variables to vary its properties for different cells. To access the variables from the modulo 2D, first make sure that that operator is selected. Then open the Editor Tools menu and take a look at the Reference Variable submenu here. This submenu shows a list of all the variables provided by the selected operator. Variables can hold different types of data, like single float numbers, vectors of various sizes, SDF surface info, and more. For variables of types that contain different fields, each of those fields can be selected to get a reference to just that part. So see here under cell coordinate, we've got both the X and the Y option there. But let's use just the first one, which will get you the full coordinate as a vector. This creates a variable reference operator connected to this modulo 2D with that variable selected. Next, create a wave field operator. And we're going to connect the cell coordinate variable reference to its coordinate field input. Then we're going to connect the wave field to the height input on the PRISM SDF. Now we want that height to be somewhere between 0 and the height of those cells so that it doesn't expand too far. So we're going to set the amplitude down to 0 0.1 and the offset to 0 0.2. Right now, we aren't seeing any variations, though. 
And that's because the cell coordinate variable counts in whole numbers. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And the wave that we've set up here has a period of 1. So each of the cells is just getting the beginning of that wave, which is whatever this offset setting is. Try increasing the period to something like 4, and you'll see how that wave is repeating every four columns. Try adjusting the phase parameter to shift the wave along those columns. You can also change which axis of this coordinate we're using by changing the axis setting on the wave field, for example, to Y, in which case it will be based on the rows instead. So what's going on here? Recall from the concepts video that the Raymark renderer works by marching points through the scene along a ray from the camera outward. At each step along the way, the renderer asks its SDF input about what the closest surface is to that point until it hits a surface. So first, so first the renderer asks its input, the modulo 2D, what's near a point. The modulo 2D looks at that position and wraps it so that it repeats along the grid taking the remainder, or the modulo, of the position divided by the size of the grid. It also takes the position and divides it by the size, and rounds it down to determine the row and the column of the cell. It sticks that information into its cell coordinate variable. Then it asks its input, the prism SDF, about that modified location. Then the prism SDF asks its height field input what the height of the prism should be. The wave field asks its coordinate field input, the variable reference, what coordinates it should base the wave on. The variable reference grabs the value out of that cell coordinate variable and provides that to the wave field as a vector. The wave field then looks at the x or y, depending on which axis is selected, part of that vector, and applies a sine wave to it, and then returns the result to the prism SDF. The prism SDF then uses the result as the height when it does its calculations to produce the SDF surface info. Then it passes that result to the modulo 2D, which forwards it along to the renderer. In order for the variable to work, it has to be filled with the right value before anything tries to use it. In general, what that means is that the variable reference can only be used when it is connected to one of the inputs on the operator that's providing the value. If we were to disable or remove the modulo 2D and connect the prism SDF directly to the renderer, nothing would be providing that variable so it wouldn't know where to get the value from. And the result would be strange, unpredictable behavior. In some cases, this will result uh, in a shader error or a warning on the operator that tries to use it saying the variable reference isn't valid. On top of that, there are some additional restrictions on which inputs of an operator can use which variables. For the modulo 2D, 
the cell coordinate is based on the sizing of the grid. So you can't use that as part of a field that's providing the size of the grid using the mo modulo 2D's size field input. Another important aspect of this is that variable reference operators are bound to a specific source that provides the variable. So you need to be careful when copying and pasting variable references and operators that provide the associated variables. Next, we'll look at a variable provided by Prism SDF itself. On the Prism SDF, you'll notice that there is a page of parameters called variables. This is another way to create variable references in addition to using the editor tools menu. So we can see that Prism SDF provides a few different variables, including the position along the axis. So in this case, that would be the Y axis. But if you were to change the setting on the Prism, it would use whichever one is selected there. Then there is the normalized axis position, which takes that position along that axis and scales it so that it is zero on one end and one on another end of the prism. Then there is the normalized angle, which goes from zero to one, representing the angle around that axis. Click the normalized axis position to create a reference to that variable. Create another wave field and connect this new variable reference to its coordinate input. And then we're going to connect this wave field to the radius field input on the Prism SDF. Then adjust the amplitude down to 0.05 and the offset to 0.3. Try adjusting the phase parameter on the wave to shift the wave along that range. Note how the wave fits to whatever the height is for each prism. So what's this doing? When the prism SDF is asked about a point in space, it first figures out the height in this case, using that variable reference and the wave field coming from the modulo 2D. Then it takes position along the axis and scales that based on the height and sticks that into its normalized offset variable. Then it asks its radius field input what the radius should be. In this case, that's the second wave field which then asks its input, the second variable reference, what coordinates it should use, which then takes that variable from the prism SDF and passes that along to the wave field, which does its sine wave calculation and passes that radius value up to the prism SDF, which then uses that in its calculations to produce its response to its output. It's important to note that this variable can't be used to control the height of the prism since it's based on the height of the prism. So that variable won't have the right value until after the height has been determined. If you try to connect it to the height field input, you may get some sort of non-error result, but it's not going to have a predictable behavior and it's probably not gonna be what you want. In future versions of the toolkit, there's gonna to be more thorough validation that will check for this kind of issue and show warnings. That's it for this section. As we've discussed, variables are a way for operators to provide additional information to their inputs. In our example here, the modulo 2D is providing the cell coordinate variable, which is then being used upstream by this variable reference here to control the property of the Prism SDF. And that Prism SDF is providing its own variable 
which is used in the second input here to control the radius. Lots of operators provide variables, so it's worth checking for the variables parameter page to see what's available. And you can also use the editor tools menu and see what's available in there. In future videos, we'll discuss ways to define and use your own custom variables. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video in the series. Check out my Patreon for access to scene files, exclusive tutorials, and more. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe.